Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lessons, we discussed force and the effects of forces. And one of the effects that we discussed was a force is able to decrease the speed of a moving object. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss one of the forces that is able to slow down a moving object, and that is frictional force. My name is Albert. I hope you'll enjoy the lesson. So by the end of this lesson, I will expect you to describe frictional force in terms of the three states of matter. Remember, physics is the study of matter, that is solids, liquids, and gases. So we are going to describe friction in terms of friction in solids, friction in liquids, and then friction in gases. Then you are going to describe generally the origin of friction force and then the effects of friction force. And then finally, you will give the advantages and disadvantages of friction force. And then at the end, you will give us how to reduce, how to reduce friction force. So friction force is a force that opposes motion between two surfaces that are in contact. So it's important to note from the beginning that this force is a, an example of contact force. So for friction to take place, the two bodies must be touching each other. Now we are going to see the contact between solids and solids, contact between solids and liquids, and then maybe contact between gases and solids or gases and liquids. So we are going to see two surfaces of different uh, types, all of different states of matter. But you are going to start with friction in solids. So if the two bodies, all particles, all surfaces which are in contact are solids, we are going to call it frictional uh, force. And frictional force acts in such a direction as to oppose the motion of an object across the surface. For example, if you have a box here, and then it's on top of a table, this box is on top of a table, and then one is pulling in the direction of your force. You are pulling that box in that direction towards the right of the screen. Then there will be a force here at the contact between the table and the box, which will be moving this box or which will be acting opposite, backwards. So this is what we call frictional force. This force hinders the motion of the box. The box is supposed to move to the right, but there's a force which will be pulling the box to the left. So in that case, we will call it a frictional force. And now the big question is, what causes friction force in solids? Just like I mentioned, whenever you have uh, two solids in contact, like a box on top of a table. If you are moving to this direction, it's receiving a resistant force, which you call frictional force. Now, if you cut this part where the two surfaces are in contact with each other, let me extract it and then post it there. What if you take it to investigate in a lab under a microscope you will realize that part looks like this under a microscope it will have ridges and then the lower part will look like this it will have uh, bumps and the bumps and the ridges will be entangled with each other these are what we call the bumps so the bumps and the ridges will be intertwined or entangled or held, will be holding each other. Now, the holding or the entanglement between the bumps and the ridges is the one which hinders motion. And that's, of course, by the way, why if you place a box on top of a table, it cannot slide off because it's being held by the ridges and the pumps between the two surfaces. Now, for you to make this box to move, 
then you have to apply enough force. You have to apply enough force, which will overcome the force from the ridges and the bumps, and then it will make the box to move. And immediately you withdraw your force, then the ridges and the bumps at that point where the box has reached will also in, uh, entangle and the box will stop uh, moving. So that is the origin of friction force. Uh, origin of friction force is that between the two surfaces, there are ridges and bumps. If you view under microscope, then now these two parts, which are ridges and bumps, no matter how smooth the particle is, it has these two. Then they are the one which uh, intertwine or the one which uh, entangles. Now, for you to remove that entanglement, then you have to apply enough force. Now, this force is the one which will make the box to move. And if you withdraw the force, or if you use less force than the one from the ridges and the bumps, then the box will not move because friction will be higher than the force that you are applying. Now, this has led us to the second part of this lesson, that is physicosity. Remember, we discussed friction in solids and we called it solid uh, frictional force. Now, when friction takes place in liquids and gases, that is fluids, we call it physicosity. Sometimes physicosity is called physical drug, and we are going to discuss more about it in the last topic of Form 2 called fluid flow. Now, the resistance or the, the, the force which resists motion in fluids depends on two factors. First one is density, and then the other one is the shape of the body moving through the fluid. In the case of density, how density affects resistance of a body moving in a fluid, or how density affects physicosity, we will have two uh, beakers here. You can even set up this experiment at your home. You can use a cup. You have two beakers of the same size, and then in one beaker, we have water. We have water. We have water like that. And then in the second beaker, we have mercury. We have mercury. It's mercury. And then this is water. Remember, when we were discussing density in the previous topic, we said the density of water is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. That is density of water and then when we are discussing the same density we said density of mercury is 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter so we are going to realize uh, mercury is more dense uh, than water so now if you take a stone and put it here and then start your stopwatch the time it will take for this stone to reach at the bottom of this beaker Will be very short than the time it will take the same stone up here to move through the mercury to the base of this beaker so this means if it takes less time it will take less time in water to reach at the base and then it will take more time in mercury then it means mercury offers more resistance to motion of that stone in it. And water offers less resistance for this stone to move in it. Therefore, when you have a fluid of more density, physicosity or friction in that fluid is very high. And then when you have a fluid of low density, physicosity or friction in fluids will be very low. So the motion in where we have uh, liquids with less density, motion will be very fast. And when we have uh, more density, motion will be very slow. Now, when it comes to a shape, it will also depend on the shape of the body which is moving inside the fluid. For example, if you have same beaker here, and same beaker here and then you have water in this case you have water for both cases and then now you have a body which is which has a very large uh, 
size or surface area like this one. This is the body that you want it to move into this uh, beaker, to the bottom of that beaker. And then you have a body which is very sharp, like this one. Yeah, let me draw it using uh, a black pen. And you have a very sharp body like this, like this one. Now, which one will move fast into the bottom of the beaker? Because beakers are of the same size and we are using water in the same cases. Water and water. Now, in this case, a body with small surface area, small surface area will move very fast to the bottom of the beaker. And then the body with large size or large surface area will move very slowly to the bottom of uh, the beaker. And now the bodies which have small surface area, we are going to call them streamlined shape. Streamlined shape, like the shape of an aeroplane. It's very sharp at the, the further end, at the front. And then the body with large body with large area, we are going to call them non-streamlined bodies. Remember this one, we are going to discuss them in form two. So streamlined bodies, bodies with small or sharp uh, head, they will move very fast in fluids. And then bodies with large uh, surface area will move very slowly in fluids. Now, as much as we have said friction hinders motion, it has very many advantages than even disadvantages. And one of the advantages of friction is that it helps us in writing. For example, if I write here, welcome to EC Elimu. The reason why this ink stick on this uh, service is because of friction. Without friction, this ink cannot stick on this service. So it's only friction which allows us to write. Then another one is erasing. When you have written, like in this case, this person wanted to write the word impossible. But since he found it possible, then he wanted to delete uh, all to erase I and M. So it's only through friction that this eraser can be able to erase IM to make it possible. Another one is lighting a match stick. All of you at your home states, you have interacted with match sticks. The reason why a match stick can lit is because of friction between the match stick and the match box. Another one is breaking. Without friction, cars cannot break or cars cannot stop. Then it means if a car starts moving, it will be moving forever. And that one, you know, the diverse effects of that. It can cause a lot of accidents. So for brakes to up, be applied, then there must be friction. Then the other one is walking. Remember, walking, you, you walk. Everyone walks. Most people walk except those who are challenged. But for walking to take place, then there must be friction. Remember, if you have a leg like this, then you are on your shoe, like that. When you walk, there must be friction between you and the floor. The friction is going to make sure that you don't slide. If there is no friction, you will be you will not move your leg because the moment you try to place it on the ground so that you can move to the next step, then you will slide back. So you only walk because of a uh, presence of friction. Of course, everything that has advantages also has disadvantages. And the first disadvantage of friction is that friction can cause wear and tear of machines. And even the example that I'm going to give you a good example that you know is uh, friction can cause your shoe sole to be depleted with time. Like if you look at your shoe that you put last year, its sole has reduced. And that is because of the friction between your, your shoe, that is your shoe, and the floor. So whenever your shoe is interacting with the floor, it will be reduced. This part here will be reduced with time. And then at the end, it might even 
develop some holes. Another uh, disadvantage of friction is that it hinders motion. It sometimes it stops motions which are necessary, motions which we want them to occur, but friction uh, hinders motion. And then the third one is that it can produce unwanted heat. Friction can produce unwanted heat, and this one you can do it even at the point where you are. I want you to take your two hands and then wrap them together. You wrap your hands and then fill with your teeth. What do you feel? Heat. So whenever you are wrapping your two hands, the two hands are examples of solids. So when they interact, the, the, the two parts, we say the two hands have what we call the bumps and the ridges. The ridges now will be preventing motion and the bumps. And in that case, for you to make your hands move fully, they, you must use a force which must overcome that friction. In the process, heat is produced. So friction can cause unwanted heat, especially in machines. And that one is very dangerous in factories. Then now we have methods of reducing friction. One of it is oiling and greasing. Oiling and greasing is when you take a, a machine and then you apply a grease so that the parts can be can move easily and smoothly without uh, much friction. So in this case, you will be you will save your machine from wear and tear. You can see on the screen someone trying to oil uh, some part of the machine. And then another one is using rollers. You can see on this second photo, these are what we call rollers. They are cylindrical in shape and they are fixed loosely. So when you want to put the, a body on top here, if you want to transport a body, just put it there and then it will slide through that uh, belt. And mostly we use them in conveyor belts in industries to carry very heavy loads which cannot be carried by human beings. Then another way is smoothening the surface. So you can decide to smoothen the surface by either using a sandpaper. In that process, you are reducing the ridges and the bumps on those surfaces. And in that case, you have reduced uh, friction. And then finally, you can use a ball bearing. The ball bearing is the second photo you can see on this uh, screen. So when you use ball bearing, it's going to make uh, the, the, bear, the, or the, the, the bearing, the ball bearing to rotate easily or the machine to rotate easily. This one are mostly used in motorbikes, wheels and vehicle wheels. So students, that has marked the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss cohesive and adhesive force. And then finally, we'll talk about service tension force. So welcome to ECLIMU. Learning is now simplified.